Hey guys and welcome back to a new Jetpack Compose video. In this video I will show you how you can create custom shapes in Jetpack Compose just like this one, this speech bubble shape. So as you maybe know Jetpack Compose already comes with a bunch of default shapes that we can apply with modifiers. So if we have a box like here for example and we say modifier.clip then we can clip this composable, so this box in this case, to a certain shape. And default shapes we already have is for example the circle shape, we have rounded corner shape that is pretty popular where we can pass a size for the uh, corner radius. But what if we maybe have some kind of chat app or so and we also want to say clip to speech bubble shape just like here. And we also really want to clip that content to the shape. So we don't just want to draw this shape here in our composable but really clip it to the bounds of the shape so the content that we have inside of this box column or row does really not overlap the uh, the shape here. That is what I will show you in this video. So let's get right into it. And the easiest way to build such shapes is with a normal canvas modifier. That is not how we end up really having the shape and also clipping content to it. But that is the easiest way to really see what we're doing in the Jetpack Compose preview. So for that, let's just define a little preview down here. Call that speech bubble preview or so. And inside here, we have our Compose custom shapes theme and yeah, just some kind of box which we want to apply the shape to. So here we can use the modifier that draw behind. So draw behind is a modifier that gives us this draw scope. In the end, nothing else than a canvas, something we can draw all kinds of shapes on. And then we can also toggle this preview. So we should be able to see something here in a moment. And to get started, we need to understand what a shape really is. In the end, a composed shape is just a path. And a path is in the end just some kind of line that has curves that might have uh, multiple coordinates which are connected and that path makes up a shape. And here in the canvas we can draw such a path. So we can define that path here, well path is equal to path dot apply and here we can then define um, functions or we can use functions to define how that path really looks like. So we could for example say move to so that is really just as if we had a pen which we move to a specific coordinate on our canvas. So we say move to, for example, 100F, 100F, that works with pixels here and not with the dp values that is important to know. And then we could, for example, draw a line to some other coordinate. So from coordinate 100, 100, we draw a line to maybe 200, 200. And then we could draw a line from 200, 200 to I don't know, 100, 200. And then we could close that path. So we just connect the last line with the very start of the path. If we now want to draw this path, we can say draw path, pass in the path, and we need to give it a color of, let's say, color.red. If we do this, then take a look in our preview, which we need to, we don't need to rebuild this, but we need to give our modifier a size of, let's say, 200 dp. Alt enter to import that and then you can see we just drew a triangle. So as you can see this is our whole canvas, this little square and we first move to the coordinate 100 on x and 100 on y. That is where our, our um, path starts. And then we drew the line to x 200, y 200. So we drew the line to this coordinate here. So x 200 and y 200 and then we drew it to x 100 and y 200 which is here. If we then say close, we just close off this path and that is how we get the triangle. That's of course not the shape we want to draw, but that is just how we define shapes in Jetpack Compose. We want to draw a little uh, speech bubble shape and for that, the first thing I want to draw is this round rectangle here. So in the end, this speech bubble shape consists of two paths in this case. So on one hand, we have a, a round rectangle here at the yeah uh, that makes up the the big part of the content and then we have this little tip here which is in the end just a triangle like we drew here and we need to connect these two paths to get this shape and luckily for these already common shapes like a round rectangle we already have predefined functions inside of such a path builder where we can say add round rect for example and that will just add a round rect to this path as we have it here then we need to create that here round rect and we need to define the different parameters. One thing that is individual about our speech bubble here on the left is the size of the tip. So that is something I would uh, like to keep flexible. I would like to define from the outside when we use this shape in our modifier. So let's just define this somewhere here. Tip size is let's say 15 dp. Um, so 15 dp wide 
and high. And if we want to define such a size in DP, but use it as pixels, which we need inside of this draw scope, then in a draw scope, we could theoretically um, directly convert that to pixels with this two pixels function. But later that won't work. Um, so what we need to do is we need to use the density to convert that. So instead of actually defining 15 dp here, we say with local density dot current. So depending on the current display density, we want to use 15 dp dot two pixels. Then we also have access to that right here. What's also kind of flexible is the corner radius of our round rectangle. So corner radius, also local density dot current. Let's also keep this at 50 dp, for example, and then we can make use of these two values to construct our round rect. So right here, I want to define the left, so the x value of this round rect, which is our tip size. So the um, x being equal to zero would be at the very start here. But since we have our tip that starts here and not the round rectangle, we need to start our round rectangle on the x value here at exactly the width of our tip, like here. That is why we use tip size for the left of our round rect. Then we have our top, that is just 0f, since the top starts at the very start of our canvas in y direction. Then we have our right, so the right of this round rect goes to the very end of our canvas. So we can say sized at width, so just the width of our canvas. And the bottom goes to size.height minus our tip size. Since here we again need to subtract the height of our tip here, since size.height would be exactly at this value. And then we subtract the height of our tip, so we land at this value. And last but not least, we also want to pass the corner radius, um, or is it, we can say radius x and radius y. Radius x is corner radius and radius y is corner radius as well. And then you can see in our preview, we just constructed a very basic round rack. You can see it's offset a little bit by exactly the size of our tip that we now want to draw right here. And in the end, we now want to move to this coordinate here. So if I zoom in a little bit to this coordinate where the rounding starts, we want to draw down here Then we want to draw a line to this coordinate. And then we want to close this off to have a triangle, which you can then add to our path. And that works like follows. First of all, we want to move our pen to this coordinate where the rounding starts, which is on x, the tip size again. And on y, it's simply our size.height minus our tip size minus our corner radius. So size.height would be at the very bottom here, minus tip size would be at the bottom edge of our round rect. And if we then subtract the corner radius, we land at exactly the start of our rounding here. And now that we moved our pen to this position, we can also start to draw a line. So we can say a line to x is equal to zero. So now we want to draw to the very bottom here. So x is equal to zero here and y is equal to size.height. So the very bottom of our canvas. And then we want to draw another line to x in this case equal to the tip size plus our corner radius. So that is now right here. And the y value is equal to size.height minus our tip size. And as you can see, there is our triangle that we just drew. We can also call close, but I think the path already does that if we don't call it manually. And as you can see, we now have our speed travel shape we can apply to composables. But right now, what you will notice is if we have our box here, and let's say that box actually has some kind of content. Let's say we have a hello world text here. Then you can see the hello world text doesn't really get clipped off here. But that is what we expect from a shape. We expect that we don't see this H in this case because it's outside of our shape. How do we now accomplish that? Well, we can do, we can create a custom shape for that. Let's go to our package hierarchy and we create our speech bubble shape, which is nothing else than a normal class. And in the constructor, we pass all of our variable inputs. So on the one hand, our corner radius in DP. And on the other hand, our tip size, also in dp. And we can also default that to something like 15 dp. Oops, we need to import that. And we can also default the corner radius here. And the magic happens when we actually implement the shape interface from Compose. We then can hit Command and I to override this create outline function. And this gives us everything we need to actually create this outline, which is in the end nothing else than a path which we've already built. So we can go to our preview 
we can copy everything from this path. So how we created that path, copy that, paste it in here in this uh, create outline function. We first of all need to create the tip size, which uh, here we actually don't need with a local density because we already have this density provided here. So we can just say with density is equal to tip size dot two pixels. We can then do the same for our corner radius. Corner radius is corner radius dot two pixels. There we go. Here we have our path. And now we need to return this outline. And one way to create an outline is just to say return outline dot generic. Whoops, what did I do here? Uh, outline dot generic, because that lets us pass a path, which is our path we created here. And now we have our very custom speech bubble shape we can then apply to our composables. So we can now get rid of this draw behind modifier completely like this. And instead say, we want to clip this box to our speech bubble shape. And if we then give it a background color of color that red, you will see now it actually gets clipped based on our shape. Of course, that is now not what you really want to uh, make it look like because uh, the text is cut off and you would actually want the text to start inside of the speech bubble. We can achieve that with a simple offset modifier for the um, child element. So here for the text, we can pass a modifier that offset and we can offset it on the X axis based on the size or based on the uh, tip size of our speech bubble shape, which in this case is 15 dp if we do that and we re-render this, then you will notice, okay, now it actually starts directly inside of our speech bubble. In this case, you could also offset it a little bit on the y-axis as well. So um, the little corner of this H also doesn't get cropped off, but I think you get the idea. And the cool thing about paths is you can do pretty much everything with these. So this is, of course, a simple shape, a simple triangle, but you can also create roundings with uh, so-called Beziers. You can create path effects, you can create dotted lines, you can make outlines with these paths. So you're really flexible with these. If you want to learn that in detail, how you can work with that and how you can draw such shapes and also animate them on a canvas, then I have a whole dedicated course on that topic. So if you want to learn that, check the first link in this video's description to my Canvas course. And other than that, thanks so much for watching. I will see you back in the next video. Have an amazing rest of your week. Bye-bye.